We've talked before about how far behind we are on bridges and tunnels and, and roads. Uh, do we have a similar problem potentially with some high-rise buildings? Well, certainly this is indicative of, you know, issues in the, in the country that we have much of our infrastructure that has uh, been built by a prior generation and it requires maintenance. And so we've seen that we've, we actually do a report card on America's infrastructure. We release that every four years. We don't do a category on buildings because we haven't had the data that we need in order to do that. But looking at the other categories of infrastructure, the cumulative GPA has been a C minus. 11 of those 17 categories of infrastructure are in the D range. Uh, and that reflects a need to maintain our infrastructure. Buildings are no exception, just like a house, a car. If you don't maintain it, uh, it does lead to problems. Well, and Tom, we don't know what happened in Surfside. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but you know the possibilities here. As I understand it, you know far better than I. When it comes to a road or a, a bridge, there's a sort of a natural life, and you know that within some period of time, you're going to have to repair or replace it. Is the same thing true with the building? Is there a natural life where you need to be saying, we need to go back and take another look at that building now because it's been up for, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years? You know, infrastructure, it's, it depends on so many different circumstances. Of course, when you're, you're building on coasts, you have a little different considerations in terms of wind and hurricanes uh, and salt water. Um, so different conditions that you have to consider. You get some areas, you're in seismic areas. There's a lot of different considerations. But we do uh, want to make, make sure that we're looking at the entire life cycle of our infrastructure and planning it out for the entire cycle of life. Uh, and that's very, very important. And maintenance is, is, a, is a key issue. And as you mentioned, we don't know exactly what caused this. We won't know for some time. We have investigators that will be actively looking at, at that, experts. Uh, our hearts and, and prayers and, and thoughts are with the family. This is, you know, obviously safety is at the core of everything that civil engineers do. So we're very, very uh, heartbroken over this. Fortunately, this is a very rare occurrence to have an existing building here, in this case, 40 years old, to have that happen. We have many buildings that are over 40 years old that are operating perfectly fine, um, but it's something that is just, we have to be diligent about evaluating what happened, learn from it, and we will improve and always continuously improve as engineers uh, in protecting public health, safety, and welfare. And, and Tom, as you say so correctly, the big story here is the human tragedy. We can't take our eye off that. At the same time, we want to prevent the next one, if there's a likelihood of a next one. So we ask ourselves these questions. In your estimation, should we be looking to invest a fair amount of money in inspections of buildings at this point? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's very important. Uh, it's part of the maintenance process is making sure that we're evaluating buildings, uh, reviewing what's performing, what's not. Obviously, there are, there are, there are limitations into, to these inspections, that, of what you can actually visibly see. Uh, but there are a lot of different techniques that can be utilized to uh, inspect and make sure that we're adequately maintaining and investing in our infrastructure. And we have to make sure that we prioritize this because we want to be much more proactive and less reactive. Uh, and so we want to make sure we get out in front of this and prioritize public safety. So that's got to be our number one priority is investing in our infrastructure of all kinds, buildings included, and make sure that we are inspecting it, that whether it's a bridge such as the I-40 bridge that you see the impact when we, uh, when we um, fail to maintain there, um, but it's, whether it's bridge, a levee, um, a dam, or a building. Do we need nationwide standards? Uh, a lot of building inspections, as I understand it, are done locally and they're enforced locally. Do we need something nationwide to make sure there's a uniformity? Well, I'm sure that's something that will continue to be discussed. You know, there, there are a lot of different considerations, as I mentioned, in different locations. You've got different soil types, different weather conditions, different seismic conditions. Uh, so there is some benefit to you know, evaluating these on a sort of case-specific basis um, in different locations. However, um, you know, it's it, one thing we do know that is, is uh, adequate uh, inspections are critical, and I'm sure we'll continue to just have that discussion uh, with public officials. And what about the cost of repairs? One of the things that is reported, at least there was some reluctance, understandably, on the part of the people who own condos there, because it was going to cost an awful lot of money. When you start looking at redoing a high rise, it can be very expensive. Yeah, and that's one of the things we look at with uh, infrastructure in general. We did a failure to act study this time where this just this year we released with the economic study. What does it cost when we fail to invest in our infrastructure? So you got to look at, well, what does it cost to invest in it? But what does it cost if you fail to invest in it? And just looking at our broader infrastructure, $3,300 per family per year is spent by failing to invest. That's the hidden tax that we all pay. And whether you're looking at a building, a car, your home, uh, if you fail to maintain it, the cost is going to get more and more as you push that and kick that can further down the road. So we want to make sure we're investing in that uh, on a very frequent basis, evaluating it and continuing to prioritize our infrastructure. It's absolutely necessary for our quality of life and for life itself.